Hello there and welcome back. Today we finally talk about the Analog Eat Plus effects in depth. So I had it for a couple of weeks and I have to say I am really impressed by it. I really like it and I think it's gonna become my go-to end of chain uh, Swiss Army, Army knife. Uh, so far I used other uh, tool and the main question that I get in the past couple of weeks is, is as good as the Autobahn? Is it better as the Autobahn or the Golden Master, which is the other end of chain um, tool that I'm using? And I have to say, it's really hard to say what is best because there's different case uses and this one, as cover a lot of them, while the other it's a little more specific. So if you're interested in a comparison with the Autobaum, and spoiler alert, I didn't pick which one is best. It's just like I love them both. I did an in-depth comparison on my Patreon, so go there and check it out. But today I want to uh, try to understand uh, who is the user for the analog it effects. And first, let me tell you, I love end of chain, chain device. There's not a lot in the market and I'm surprised because a lot of us, a lot of um, producer or people like me that are interested in building a live setup because we come from bands and we want to play, um, love, people like us love this kind of instrument because we mostly like to play everything and then go out as a stereo in the PA. And having something like this, it's great because it allows you to have a final uh, touch, um, adding a final uh, layer uh, and mood to your music. For example, this is the um, beat that I beat. I don't do beat. This is the music I was playing. And uh, just to give you a quick uh, overview of the setup, Oxy is sequencing. Uh, I have the push that is the clock. I have here an instrument I can play. And uh, my modular goes using the expert sleepers into the push. I did a video a few weeks ago, so check that out. So this is how it sounds, good enough, but... This is another word. And the things that I love is that I have all the control on my hand. So I think... The analog it effects is a creative end of chain solution. If you want something that is just mastering to or give you glue, maybe there's also simpler solution, but this allows you to have a lot of stuff going on. You'll see that. So it's a lot of difference and I love it. Um, before going on and talk about how these things work, the few ways you can support my page. Please hit the like button and share this content and become a subscriber of this YouTube channel. It's free. Then you can go and check my music on Bandcamp on Spotify, free as well. And you know, it's important for us. You can buy from the affiliate link down below. And finally, you can become a patron, which is the best way to support me. Uh, you will find tons of exclusive material. I reply to all of your questions. I do one-on-one. -on -one. So I'll see you there, right? That said, let's go into the analog it effects, plus effects. The first iteration of this box was the analog it. I think they do Mark I and Mark II, if I'm not wrong. Um, it was basically this part of it, and it was a uh, distortion unit, the heat unit, which has several uh, circuit, analog circuit, to warm up your sound. Then there was a filter and an equalizer plus a mod section that had an envelope follower. It was sounding great, but for me, was lacking other tool that I need as an end of chain mastering tool. So I needed the compressor and why not some reverberation, some delay, chorus, and what they did, they add everything on this new box, which make it super convenient and super great sounding. Um, 
I, again, I love to have a creative way to deal with my uh, master bus. In, it's important, I think, to have a compressor uh, and even a touch of uh, warming circuit, like distortion, boost, whatever you want, saturation, whatever you want to call it. And so far, I always use the Autobahn, which is a very simple and great sounding tool, which gives you just compressor and distortion, and there's not a lot of control there, so it's, you know, it's always sound good. I use the Golden Master, which is more aimed uh, from endorphins, aimed to just have a mastering tool at the end of your chain. And I use my overstayer down there, and that is the higher end of it. It's um, almost a mastering tool, very expensive, very greatly sounding, but something you cannot bring live with you. These two, it's something instead that sit great in your live uh, performance. How does it work? So, you have a flow chart here, and these eight boxes are the boxes that you can use. Uh, you have, now I read the order that I used in my uh, thing. Let me check something, okay, that you see perfectly there. So we have a heat, warble, uh, beat, bass, chorus, delay, reverb, and compressor. With all of these, you manage to create your chain of sound and you can move them wherever you want. Not only that, pressing the flow chart, you see that you have a, a bar under them and you can decide the dry, wet mix for each box, for each device, which is great because you can really create interesting uh, variation. Not only that, you could use something like this a controller like this, an N16 or any other control, map it to that and then have an enhanced control on all of that. Uh, things, I didn't do that. Because uh, it's too much for the first demo. And uh, let's just try to build a patch from scratch. So I think it's the best way. You have preset, you, they just change it. That I have to say, I prefer how it was in previous firmware. Firmware was changed right now, but it, it prevent errors. So now you press these and these load and save preset appear. Before it was just loading faster. So let's load an empty one. All right, and let's play. So this is the sound we are dealing with. I like to start with the heat and compressor and I like to have the compressor almost at the end because it's what will manage to get my uh, sound good and controlled. You have also this bass. Uh, bass is a, a tool that allows you to control the phase of your sound and mono the bass. So that could be actually before and then compressor. You can of course be creative and put the compressor before, whatever, but we will do a simple thing. Heat is your analog part. Let's for now do something like this and then we can move. So whenever the boxes are with dotted lines means that they are deactivated. Now to activate you just press yes and no and now it's activated. So let's start with heat. Heat allows you to have this uh, um, distortion which are eight different uh, warming circuit. I usually end up always in this side. I like Enhance and Clean Boost a lot. And you have here, when you activate it, a mix level, which decide the mixing of this analog part. And I like to overdo a little and then dial it down. You can decide the level because of course in a Pushing the uh, saturation will lift your volume. So with the level here, you can tune it down. You also have here on the left, the input gain and the, on the right, the output gain. Uh, also important, when you start, you go in input sensitivity here and you check that the input is good for, uh, for, for the machine. In this case, I, we could go high, but I'm 
I'd rather stay on medium and push a little more the output here. This is okay. So, the heat. We did some enhancing. Let's listen. For example, this drive unit, rough crunch, classic distortion, round fast, and high gain. I'm telling you, each one has its very nice character. It can have uses for anything. But let's use Enhance for now. The next step, you have the filter, which I like to use it as a performance tool. I really love how the filter and the resonance use. I never use resonance usually, but with this, it has so much nice spots. So it's really playable, and it's great to have it here. Filter can be low pass, high pass, band pass, a lot of stuff. And you can bypass it by pressing that if you want. I always like to have a lift. And then your EQ with high and low, which is always great to have. So these cover the heat section. Let's go now on the bass. On the bass, simply, you press, I like to have mono bass and you decide the frequency here. So let's put like 180 and down mono. And then you have a high pass and low pass level, which I won't touch right now. That's it, that's what I like to do with that. And then let's go in the compressor. Compressor, simply put, you have a threshold and you can see the uh, gain reduction there. Of course, it's nice to have a sort of G compressor, like SSL G compressor at the end. That's why I love having a compressor here. Attack, I set in the way that da don't uh, kill the kicks, because if we go with a fast attack, the transient of the kick will be killed. You can hear. So I let that pass and I like longer release. Usually, you can push a little the gain, already nicer sounding. Compressor page two, you have the ratio. Usually when you use it at the end of chain, you wanna stay around four or six. You don't want to really push it too much. Sometimes I do like to push it too much. That's up to you. You decide if it's a creative decision or not. And with the analog kit, I feel you should use it whatever you want, but I like to use it more creative. It, I want to create a sound. With it. The sidechain filter decides if the compressor is triggered by the low end, the high end, or everything. If you put it in low end like this, it will have more of a pumping sound, which we like. And then you have a parallel or, or full wet, half and half, so you can use it in a parallel or full way. So let's listen what we got so far. Let me put my headphone because I can listen better to that. I break my headphone, so now I have this, this nice antennas here. Like it, yeah? So, this is without. Nice. I love it. This is very little, but it's more glued. Depth. There's more depth to it. Now let's let's keep adding to our patch. So reverb and delay on the master bus. Up to you. I like to have it. I like to have delay because. Uh, it can work as a sort of dub delay on everything. So let's turn it on and let's see how it works. I set up the same uh, BPM, so it's on time. It has the lucky things that uh, latest Electron have, so uh, you see the 1.8 or whatever, you can reset the thing pressing it and put not. I like dotted eight can be ping pong, so open up the stereo. You can decide how width it is. Mm. 
nice. And you also have, of course, the uh, filter of it, so we can have only on the eye hand. And then reverb and delay has a send mode, uh, three different modes, send, return, or mix. Mix is like wet and dry. Return is how much of the return level, but I like in send, so how much level you send to the delay. From here to here. Let's now load something else. Let's load the river. I like to have the reverb on my higher hand. So, for example, here you can already decide how would sound if I put the delay after the reverb. Nice. Then you have a chorus. Let's turn it on. We turn it on everything and then we'll fine tune. It's always useful to go very hardcore with it and then tune it down. This allows some warbliness that you love. Then what we have? We have the bits. Bit is a bit reduction. So let's turn it on and then but we put dry wet to zero because we will use the envelope follower to trigger it on. I'll show you how it's done. But this is the sound of it. Let's make it pretty nasty. Last, last, oh. Let's save the preset, why not? Yes. We save it here, yes. Let's call it YouTube. So we call it Whitey. So you see how you save your thing. Saved. The last things we have to check is the Warble, that is a tape simulator, which everybody loves. So we turn it on. You have a depth and a speed of like the cassette would Warble, and you can decide to happen, make it happen on the high end or low end, which is really good to keep your bass flat. And then you have a stereo, noise, and an aperture. This one, it's nice to have just a tiny bit. This could go actually almost at the end. So let's put it just before the compress. All right. So now everything is on. Let's listen again to the on and off. So we have this very clean sound. Let's try, since we went to this uh, crunchy tune. Ooh, I like this one. Let's keep it like this. Now, let's check the other cool things that this tool has. The envelope follower and the LFO. The envelope follower listens to your audio, and I can, as you can see, it creates an envelope. Let's say I want it to listen just to the kick, so I go in the second page and I filter it out everything, and I just listen to the kick. As you can hear, that creates an envelope. The envelope goes directly into the filter, so we can as you can hear. Now I'm saying when the kick hits, close the filter. On the filter you also have the LFO, so you can add everything, and it's cool that you can see, it's cool that you can see the actual result of everything you're doing to it, the envelope that is actually happening. Let's also go back to the mod. Uh, you can send, to another destination here. 
For example, let's pick uh, the bits here. So now the bits are activated when there's the kick. We are going very random and creating something creative, but just to let you know how easy it is and how things work. We can move the bits and put it here. So from here, that was clean, to something very, I don't want, here it is. Now the opposite, the, the envelope opened the filter when the kick happened. Let's make a slower attack, faster release. And then in the mod you have three, two or three, three LFO, crazy, and a matrix where you can decide most of all the other modulation, source and destination. So as you can understand here, you can go very, very hardcore. So let's save this preset. And now let's load some preset that I did. And hear how it really create weird stuff. So this is my dub. From here to here. More. Let's load my mastering one, which is the most simple. From here to here, which is not a lot, but this is what a lot of other tools would do, like simple mastering tool. You don't want to hit too hard. Of course, I enjoy a lot to play with this as a creative tool, and, and I really love the fact that it destroy my sound somehow. And, and it's called analog heat, so you want to make it very hot, right? So you can take your pattern, your sound in really many interesting, interesting way. And I love the fact that you have a master filter. So, let me go to some sort of conclusion here because we see everything. It's really easy to use. And yes, it goes very easily in this more dark, crunchy tone. And I think it has been created with that in mind uh, because it's all started with the uh, drive section of it. I feel somehow is a repurposing of that pedal that had the great potential to become this and I feel this is the final product somehow. It sounds great to me, and uh, it's it's something very fun to use uh, for live purposes. It's amazing and very convenient. Also, it has overbridge, so you can use it as a plugin in your computer with just one cable, which is always very convenient. And I I feel I feel that for live purposes, this is pretty great. I. I can't wait actually to use it 
because it has also the uh, control in which takes CV control. So I can control it with my modular case and also I can control it with the uh, push. And what you see now, this four thing here, is going to be my future setup with the last box that everybody's curious about, the S4, which I'm beta testing and demo coming soon and is amazing. And this is going to be something that will allow me to do crazy stuff. Ideally, the sound would be this into the um, push via ADAT with expert slippers. The output of the push into the S4 and then the S4 into the analog it affects. So with this, I, I can yeah, do basically everything I need. I will have the live exploded control of a modular, my favorite sequencer, uh, what is becoming my favorite sampler and granular sampler and audio mangler, the push which will be um, tying everything together, allow me to mm, trigger a sample and uh, full tracks when you need it. And then at the end, analog it effects. I could of course do a mastering chain on the push, but having the filter, the EQ, uh, all these crunch possibilities and all the nice effects, I think it's really, really great. All right. I guess this marked the third week in a row that I talk something related to Electron or Electron, whatever you want to say it. You know, that's one of my favorite things. I forgot to mention, I just released an EP using the Analog 4 and this together, so you can go check it out. And it's on my Bandcamp, soon it's going to be on my Spotify. You can also support buying that. And also there's a sound pack I made with the Analog 4 which you can buy on Electron website. That's it. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any question, hit me up in the comment. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next week.